We know it since our birth. We see it every night, and without it, things would be very different here on Earth. Here are some facts you might have missed about that big rock over your head. The Moon 13. We found water on the Moon. Yes, we did, in the form of ice trapped within dust and minerals on and under the surface. It had been found on areas of the lunar surface in permanent shadow. Still, it's so freezing that it enables the ice to survive. How did it get there? Astonishingly, the water in the moon was likely delivered to the surface by comets. The moon is full of human trash. There is certainly a lot of trash left from the moon from all those space missions. In all, there are around 400,000 pounds of man-made material thrown on the lunar surface. Only a small list of things that have been left behind. 70 different spacecraft, including crashed orbiters and rovers, TV cameras, 96 bags of human waste in one form or another, two golf balls, 12 pairs of boots, and many other pieces of equipment. Someone on the moon cleaning crew is going to have to do a lot of work. 11. The moon makes the Earth move, and the tides too. Everyone knows that the moon is slightly responsible for causing the tides of our oceans and seas on Earth, with the sun also having an effect. Still, as the moon orbits the Earth, it also causes the tide of rock to rise and fall in the same way as it does with water. The effect is not as dramatic as it is with the oceans, but it is a measurable effect, with the Earth's solid surface moving by several centimeters with each tide. 10. There is no dark side of the moon. The misunderstanding about a permanent dark side probably comes about because only one side of the moon is ever seen from Earth. Still, both sides of the moon actually get the same amount of sunlight. The moon rotates on its own axis with the same amount of time it takes to go around the Earth. The only time humans witnessed this other side was from an orbiting spacecraft around the moon. At the moment, the moon rotated at a different speed, but the pull from the Earth made the moon's mass shift towards the Earth. This naturally locked it into a perfect rotation with us here on Earth. Amazingly, other planets' moons in our solar system have done the same thing. 9. The dark areas on the moon are really cooled lava. Dark, flat layers of basaltic lava flows cover about 16% of the moon's total surface. The lava is believed to have flowed long distances before low-lying flooding areas, like impact basins. But where the lava actually erupted from, is it difficult to identify because of things like erosion from objects hitting the moon or younger flows covering older ones? 8. Helium-3 from the moon could give us the infinite amount of energy. The sun's solar wind is electrically charged. Occasionally, it clashes with the moon and is swallowed by the rocks on the moon's surface. One of the most valuable gases held in that wind and captured by those rocks is helium-3, a rare isotope of helium-4 generally used to inflate balloons. Helium-3 fuses effortlessly and would be ideal for use in nuclear fusion reactor to create energy. 100 tons of helium-3 could provide enough energy for a year. The moon's surface contains approximately 5 million tons of helium-3, while Earth has around 15 tons. 7. The moon doesn't orbit the Earth. Instead, it travels with our planet, sometimes behind, sometimes ahead, as Earth revolves around the sun. In fact, the sun rules the moon's motion. The reason we believe the moon orbits Earth is since it seems that way from our prospect, we perceive it the opposite the sun in one moment, full moon, and then two weeks later it may throw a shadow on the Earth while in the direction of the sun. But Edberg points out that we are missing something and should look at the bigger picture. Over a year, we must consider the moon as it relates to the Earth and the sun. 6. There are small moonquakes on the moon. Astronauts discovered this using seismograph during their missions there. They are supposed to occur a few miles under the surface and reflect cracks on the surface. This has led scientists to hypothesize that the moon has a molten center comparable to the one here on Earth. 5. Moon trees are among us. Apollo 14 astronaut Stuart Rusa had some seeds with him while in orbit around the moon when Alan Shepard and Edgar Mitchell were on the surface. The seeds were later grown when they got back to Earth, and more than 400 were planted at different places in the country and around the world. They are also known as moon trees and are still alive and are doing well today. 4. A mirror on the moon helps us in measuring the distance. 
We got a two-foot wide panel with a hundred mirrors placed on the moon's surface pointed at the Earth. It's used to precisely measure the distance from the Earth to the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set it on July 21, 1969, just before the accumulation of their final moonwalk. It's the last science experiment from the Apollo missions that runs even today. Earth telescopes send laser pulses off the moon's mirror and intercepts the returning pulse to measure the distance. 3. The birth of the moon gave us our 24-hour day. Earth's moon was probably formed after a planet-sized object collided with Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. But one lingering question captured scientists about the impact birth theory. Why is the Earth and the moon made out of the exact same material from a geochemical perspective? Why doesn't the moon contain material from the mysterious impactor? In 2012, Harvard scientist Sarah Stewart and Matya Cook offered a new vision of the moon's formation with one unique key element, a fast spinning Earth. At the moment of impact, if the planet had been making a rotation once every two to three hours, they calculate, the collision would have launched a bunch of proto-Earth material into orbit. Over time, gravitational synergies between the Earth, Moon, and Sun would slow Earth down to the 24-hour day we see today. Two. Why does the moon often turn red or brown during a lunar eclipse? Turns out the color comes from the Earth's atmosphere. Through a lunar eclipse, where the Earth passes between the moon and the sun, the only sunlight that reaches the moon is the stuff that passes through the Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere filters and refracts the sunlight, giving only the red part of the spectrum behind. It's the same effect that provides us with sunsets. If there were no atmosphere on Earth, the moon would go completely dark during a lunar eclipse. 1. The full moon exerts an emotional pull on the mind of the man. Or does it? Scientists have yet to find challenging, persuasive evidence to support the idea of lunacy. Australian scientists trying to find any proof of a relationship between any face of the moon and the violence or aggression degree 